In the 1960s, the steam locomotive was still the prominent power in use on the Western Australian Government Railways. This 3 foot 6 inch gauge system radiating from Perth offered a variety of locomotive types. Through the lens of the rail fan camera, we can look back at the close of an era, one that succumbed to dieselization and the coming of the standard gauge line from the eastern states. To reach the east of the state, the double track main line traversed the Darling Ranges. The steeply graded line with many curves of tight radius was a tortuous route that beyond the range fanned out to serve the wheat belt. This 56 mile section was replaced by a better graded dual gauge line in 1966. Introduced in 1955, the 24 B-Class were the last steam locomotives purchased by the Western Australian Railways. Built by Robert Stevenson and Hawthorne's Limited of Darlington, England, these 134-ton machines were the most powerful, non-articulated locomotive ever operated on an Australian Government 3-foot 6-inch gauge system. Chidlow, in the Darling Ranges, was a popular refreshment station, particularly for trains travelling from Perth. Beyond the ranges, the main line served the wheat belt and continued on through scrubby country to the gold fields of Kalgoorlie. At Kalgoorlie, passengers and loading for the eastern states were transferred to the Commonwealth Railway's standard gauge line. Radiating from the main Kalgoorlie route were a number of both main and branch lines serving the vast areas to the south coast and north to other wheat and gold fields areas. The wide, deep fireboxes, which burned collie coal to its best advantage, made these, and the W class, the most popular on the system. Early morning lights, the Perth bound express from Kalgoorlie passes the goods train. The steeply graded line over the Darling Ranges caused many eastbound trains to be banked by a locomotive in the rear.
The commuters in the capital city, Perth, were served by a transport system which included an extensive trolleybus system. The railway station was a hive of activity, equal on scale to any other city terminal in the country. In the streets, trolleybuses were prominent. The trams had finished in 1958, and just ten years later, the trolleybus would pass into history. At Midland Junction, a suburban terminal, we see the D-Class type tank locomotives. These were ideal for suburban running. The DM and DD class were 464 tanks, issued to traffic in 1945 and 46 in a post-war scheme to modernise the Perth suburban system. Perth Station was the hub of the railway system. The three suburban lines radiating to Fremantle, Midland and Armadale saw an impressive array of steam workings, especially during the peak hours of the day. All the country services left from the station, which at the time this film was taken, saw services departing from Geraldton, Mullawa, Kalgoorlie, Albany and Bunbury. Rail cars were starting to make their way onto the suburban running, the first ones being introduced in 1954. The locomotive depot was located at East Perth, and there were many light engine movements before and after the peak hour. Of the three suburban lines operated, we now take a look at the Fremantle line. Opened in 1881, this busy double-track route was always considered a major link in the suburban rail system. Surprisingly, it was closed for four years, from 1979 to 1983, when transport policies favoured a replacement bus service. However, public opposition to closure saw it reopened, and it is now a very busy, electrified suburban service. The line passes from well-established suburbs close to Perth to the later settled areas of the 1950s and as it nears the Indian Ocean runs along beach sand country before arriving at the seaside city of Fremantle. The impressive Fremantle railway station opened in 1907 is as busy today as it was then when these scenes were taken. Other than electric trains being in vogue, the barrier gates have given way to an open plan entrance and ticket machines. Fremantle had a busy tramway system of six tram routes. It was of three foot six inch gauge and closed in 1952. The line to Armadale is part of the main line to Bunbury, which feeds branch lines further to the south.
Armadale, the locomotive pauses for a top-up from the water crane before the return trip to Perth. Tank locomotives are ideal for suburban operation as they don't have to be turned at each terminal and can run at full speed in either direction unlike their counterparts with the tender. Bunbury, the loco depot was prominent on the skyline. The G-Class loco, a veteran of 1895, is busy shunting around the station yard. Bunbury was a point on the railway system where traffic from Perth met with traffic from further south. The large locomotive depot building was removed in 1985 and part of it was re-erected at the Boyan Up Museum, 15 miles from Bunbury. But Bunbury station no longer sees trains. The railway was cut back to a terminal at Waddeston, three miles from the town centre in 1985 and the station building is now a tourist information centre in a car park. In our happier scenes of the early 1960s, W922 backs onto a passenger train bound for Perth. Brunswick Junction, the divergence point of the busy coal-carrying railway from Collie. The coal mines fueled the railway locomotive fleet at Electricity Commission Powerhouse at Bunbury. The station at Brunswick Junction has been radically altered and the building and signal box have been totally removed. The W-Class General Purpose Locomotives, built by Bayer Peacock of England, entered service in 1951 and 52. There were 60 in the class, and they were popular with the crews. The line south from Bunbury to Northcliffe passed through Bridgetown, which was a major locomotive servicing point. The station was approached from the Northcliffe end by a steep grade, which resulted in considerable remarshalling of trains. In addition to through services, trains originated and finished their journey at Bridgetown. This meant that the station area was a hive of activity. Other than handling general traffic from this well-populated area, timber from the forest was the most important traffic to the railways.
the Western Australian Railways designed and built the 10 S-Class locomotives, a 4A2 configuration during the period of the Second World War. Designed for general traffic, they ran on the Eastern and Eastern Goldfields lines. When dieselization moved into that area, the S-Class were based on good services in the southwest of the state. Many steam haul tramways run by the sawmills connected with the government railway to convey the prized Jarrah and Kauri product to the cities. One timber tramway that lasted to the end of the 1960s was that operated from the Donnelly River Mill, junctioning from the main government line at Yornup. Mill haul timber over its 20 mile line using ex government railway locomotives fired with wood. These timber carrying lines were purpose built and engineering and construction principles were kept to a minimum to contain costs. Despite the slow speed, the condition of the track caused the cameraman to hang on whilst attempting to properly shoot these scenes. Firing with wood relieves a fireman of a need for a shovel. Arriving at Donnelly River Mill, the visitor was awed by a completely steam-driven plant with the attendant roar of the machinery operating way out in the bush. At the end of the working day, old number 86 is topped up with water and then moved to its depot to be stabled until required for the run back to Yornup the next day. Manjimup was the junction for the Dean Mill Tramway. Here we see State Sawmill Loco No. 2, a former West Australian G-Class Loco, taking a train to the mill.
These three foot six inch gauge lines enabled the rolling stock of the government railway to be taken many miles into the bush to be loaded at the mill site. Mill towns could be quite large centres of population, located in the dense bush, and especially in earlier times, the tramways provided the link with the outside world. The state sawmill at Pemberton operated an extensive timber tramway network, which still has today exchange sidings in the Pemberton station yard. Here, wagons of timber are placed for the government railway to pick up and haul them to the cities. To carry a sufficient wood supply on the tender, higher sides were added and wood stacks reached above the cab roof. Timber tramways had their peak from the turn of the century to the late 1930s. They were prominent all over Australia and were as ingenious as the Bushmiller who built them. They could run on either timber or steel rails Motive power could be horses, steam locomotives, diesel or petrol locomotives. Sometimes the rolling stock was properly constructed or it could be a Spartan as two bogies at each end of a log strapped to them. been an era of rail history that has drawn to a close and no tramways operate now in Western Australia. The Pemberton Mill today has a diesel loco that transfers the rail vehicles in and out of the mill, but as for the bush tramway, the bulldozer and the road-based timber trucks have long since taken over. Closer to Perth at Yarloop, Number 71, an ex-government railway G-Class, shunts timber at the mill. Collie has a number of coal mines in the area and was always, and still is, a busy place for railway operation. The impressive locomotive depot housed steam power until the final demise of steam in Western Australia in 1971. The F-Class were predominantly used for shunting purposes in their latter years. These goods locos were delivered in two batches, the first 15 in 1902 and a further 42 from 1912 to 1914. A train arrives from the cross-country line from Narogen, hauled by both W and S class locos. There were short lines to the coal mines around Collie and two cross-country lines to the east, one to Narogen and the other to Wagen, both being on the Great Southern Railway to Albany. Here we see a short coal train hauled by two F-Class locos in an unusual configuration.
York Loco Depot on the Albany Line. This 242-mile line, built and operated by a private railway company, was taken over by the government in 1896. Our camera takes us on a journey from York to Narragin. A wheat train has passed at Beverly. Narragin was a busy junction with lions radiating in five directions. There was a large locomotive depot and workshop. Steam operated feed water pumps supplied water for the workshops. F class number 449 is kept busy marshalling trains that seem to continually arrive from the five radiating lines. An Albany train heads south, whilst a northbound train departs for Northam and thence over the Darling Ranges to Perth. At times, trains were run tender first, but this arrangement was not common in Western Australia. Further east and into the wheat growing areas, W946 departs Dumble Young on the Lake Grace Line. The Eastern Goldfields route linked the Eastern States with the West. Northam was an important marshalling yard and locomotive depot. It was a junction with four lines radiating from it. 
the easily graded Kalgoorlie line ran in one direction, whilst the heavily graded Darling Rangers line to Perth ran in the opposite direction. Because of this, intensive remarshalling of trains took place. Meriden on the Eastern Goldfields route was a junction for wheat lines to the north and south. Combined with intensive traffic on the Kalgoorlie line, the station was a busy one. Spencer's Brook was the actual junction of the Albany Line and was six miles from Northam. The layout of the railway map in this area has changed markedly with the opening of the new dual gauge route between Midland and Northam in 1966 and the consequent closure of the narrow gauge mainline route. The steep grades of the line near Spencer's Brook saw the 134 ton V Class 2A2 locos use their full tractive effort to keep trains moving. In the late 1960s, the vast iron ore deposits were being developed in the Pilbara region, which brought the private mining railways into being. Hammersley Iron operated Century 628 locomotives. The first three Century 628 locomotives were imported from Elko products of the United States. These 2,800 horsepower diesels haul trains of around one mile in length between the port of Dampier and the mine at Mount Tom Price, a distance of 181 miles. A number of mining companies have come into being because of the vast iron ore deposits. They have built railways to transport the product to the ports and in doing so have made this area quite interesting to the railway enthusiasts. At the Mount Tom Price Mine, trains are loaded whilst on the move as they pass through a loading tunnel. Goldsworthy Mining Limited opened their 70-mile railway in May 1966 with Australian-built English electric locomotives. 
After a head-on accident between two trains in February 1968, numbers one and three were extensively damaged. Both were rebuilt and number one is shown here. The Mount Newman Mining Company Proprietary Limited imported two F7 locomotives from the Western Pacific Railroad of the United States of America. Numbered 50 and 51, they were used during the construction of their 265 mile line. By 1969, big changes were also taking place around the government railway system. To make way for the standard gauge line from the east, the East Perth locomotive depot was demolished. New suburban rail cars were culling the steam hall services. The short electrified line from East Perth into the powerhouse had become outdated and was soon to close, as was the powerhouse. The X-Class diesels had taken over much of the running. An era was passing the sight of East Perth Loco Depot and the memorable sounds created whilst climbing Mount Rawley Bank were coming to an end. The standard gauge had opened to good services. At Leighton, the new fleet was on show. The new Northern Station on the dual gauge had replaced the bustling, crowded, narrow gauge arrangement. A journey to Perth on the Westland, the narrow gauge train that provided the interstate connection from Kalgoorlie. In the suburban area, steam still ran local goods services. The dual gauge line to Northam actually gave steam a boost. A V-Class could haul 1,600 tonnes instead of the limit of 400 imposed by the old line. Captured on film has been the last of the steam era and some of the lifestyles along with the working of railways in that time. The railways have continued to develop and seek out their future where they can best pursue it. The Perth suburban system is now fully electrified and a fourth suburban line has been opened running north to Joondalup. The diesel is master of the rails and bulk haulage and container traffic is the ruling criteria for the operation of the system. But we are grateful to those who took the film so that we can sit back and enjoy the past.
The railways could take us to all parts of the state, serving the needs of the rural communities, both large and small. This was the Western Australian Railways in the 1960s.